Okay, thank you. Welcome back. We're going to start with our next speaker. We have a special guest from Romania, Zolt Feleki, an independent researcher from Romania, as I said. Having a strong mathematical background and several years experience as a data scientist, Zolt is aware of common pitfalls of NLP translators or grammatic annotators. In his project, Zolt combines NLP methods with several language games to generate a multitude of interesting word combinations. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I think my, oh my head. Okay, this is my first uh, slide. So actually, before I start, uh, I found a notebook in the in the room outside, and uh, when I returned after an hour, it was still there. So everybody, anybody who recognized ananas.rs, I don't know, or may I look inside? I don't know. <laughs> May I look inside the Dragana Radic. Dragana Radic? Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that you? Not you. Because I know because I know Dragana, so <laughs> Okay, so um, actually uh, it's a very big surprise for me to be here. Because, uh, well, I just uh, posted on LinkedIn about half a year ago that I'm searching for people with similar interests. So let's do something combining NLP and poetry. And, uh, well, I, pushed, I, I posted on the LinkedIn, and after two weeks, uh, Alexander wrote me, uh, he invited me to this conference. And uh, so it, <coughs> so on the one hand, it's a guy who is uh, programming, the other is the, the Greek symbol of literature, the lira. And uh, well, the other, actually when I came here in this building, there are uh, four rooms. One is the, the Voda, the water, then uh, Zemlea, the, the earth, then Vatra, the, the fire, and the fourth, I forgot, the, the, the air. But I knew there were five. And I forgot what is the fifth. So can somebody tell me the fifth? It's void. So it's the void. Of course, you cannot name something uh, from the void. And uh, why? Because I, when I put this project on the LinkedIn, I was searching for people who would do the same in other languages. So may I ask uh, to see what kind of nationalities are represented here? So I suppose uh, Croatian, hands up. Ah, uh, the, ma the majority, so Serbian, okay, uh, uh, Russian, uh, Romanian, I only half because I'm actually Hungarian from Romania. Uh, Swiss, <laughs> oh Swiss, also Swiss. Okay, <laughs> I lived in Switzerland, so uh, this uh, kind of thing. I speak four languages, almost mother tongue, and now I start to learn uh, uh, Slavic languages. So uh, I have my, I put my uh, contacts in a QR code. I tested it, and people with iPhone cannot, uh, I don't know why, <laughs> so I put my email address there, and, uh, oh, these are the minutes I see, left, the minutes left, okay. Um, so I want to thank you, actually, I wasn't, I'm not a data scientist uh, as a rocket scientist, or either, uh, neither I'm a poet, but I'm bo in both uh, areas, I do this something. So why not combine them? And it comes out some interesting uh, thing about poetry. So let's see. Uh, okay. So what is NLP and what is poetry? If I ask a, a guy what is NLP, some of them says this is neurolinguistic neuro programming. So we think that this NLP is natural language processing, but the, so maybe we can ask uh, ChatGTP, GTP, what is NLP, and he will 
probably, I don't know. So uh, NFP is something between computer science, AI, and, and uh, human language. And on the other hand, poetry, well, these are Hungarian poets. Here I, the, I choose the, most, the four most famous ones. And the guy here down, actually, uh, when, I, when I saw Freddie Mercury, then I thought that they, are, they have a similar face. So uh, now my, my goal was to analyze these uh, poems with uh, NLP, which is not a very complex NLP, it's only just annotation, grammatical, so see the grammatical structure of the poems. And uh, to see, is it really the most famous poet? Uh, let's, let's make a, 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 like a ranking. Uh, what are the, the ranking according to uh, literature or according to uh, common sense? And how can we rank, do ranking uh, based on criteria which are uh, not subjective, but objective? Like, and, well, uh, let's go to the next. <coughs> Actually, the motivation, the motivation is that uh, as, a, as a mathematician, so I, ah, I forgot to tell you. So actually, I was born in Romania in an area where are Hungarians too. So I'm Hungarian, that's why the, the poetry I talk about is Hungarian literature, but I'm also Romanian citizen and Swiss citizen. And actually, I was thinking, if we, if we apply, every, every, always we say that AI is making something disruptive, so changes things. So why not change these things also uh, in the literature? The other, how could we understand poetry better? So if, uh, if we just read the poems, we can go in the library and it's full of books. So if I want to, uh, if I want, for instance, to know, did a poet write about mushrooms? I have to, to read the whole book to find the mushroom. At the end, I don't find any mushroom. Uh, the problem is the, the, uh, the people, uh, the literature people, they don't like to digitize uh, poems or they, they neglect this. So I, it's only simple to just make a text search on the poems to find out, did anyone write about, I don't know, uh, speakers. Uh, the other one, uh, the motivation is that uh, three years ago I started to write poems in a very, uh, and I, I'm not, because I'm not poet, that means I'm not making my living out of that, I'm not interested to publish it, actually. I'm not, and uh, so why not combine these two? And, oh, the main, the main is not like, uh, I write multilingual poems. So if I, if I mix the languages in the poem, and the interest to find people who already have this uh, grammatical annotation in other languages, let's look at, for instance, the German. They also have, uh, uh, well, of course, we need to have uh, we, we need to have digitalized poems, and we have we need to have this grammatical analysis uh, program, and then we could uh, make some also cultural exchange. The last goal is if I want to write good poems, as a data scientist, I have a competitive advantage compared to the poets who only only write. So they cannot. They don't even know that Python is, cannot also not be a snake. So if they write a poem about Python, then they think it's about a snake, and I think also of something else. So these were the goals. Oh, by the way, I also realized I have two, uh, <laughs> compared to my abstract, I didn't put so many uh, uh, slides. So if you want to ask or interrupt with any questions, Feel free to do it. Um, what are actually the resources? Uh, when I was having this idea to do that, I found on the GitHub uh, project of the Budapest University, 
who developed already this annotation program. They have several, and they also have a so-called so Hungarian poetry corpus on GitHub, where you can download these poems. Unfortunately, it contains about 10% of Hungarian literature, but uh, uh, there are 50 poets, there are 1,000 poets. Uh, there are 30,000 poems in this uh, corpora, and I, I think there are around 150,000 poems in the literature. And here you see the words and tokens which are used there. You can, if you, if you, uh, if you, this QR code, if you watch, if you, I hope you don't, you don't have iPhone, then you can see the, the links for this GitHub. But you also type in Hungarian Poetry Corso, uh, Corpus, and how did I find other? I found Romanian, there is Romanian, and also Czech, and also German, it's the Gutenberg. So maybe, I don't know if, if there are Croatian or Serbian or Balkan people who are, have similar thoughts, uh, please free free and we make a connection. So what is a funny thing, this program which developed is called Ember, which in Hungarian means human. So <laughs> it's a, maybe a, so what can he do? He just takes the text and he analyzes uh, the, gram, the grammar, so uh, uh, the rhyme and the rhythm. So, well, there are, of course, this, uh, this stuff which, uh, which belongs to literature and poetry, poetry stuff, how many syllables. Then uh, polysem, that means you have a word which can have many different meanings or also metaphors. So they, uh, this, uh, this Hungarian uh, Budapest uh, um, uh, chair of the, of the linguistic and poetry, uh, so this is another field where you uh, analyze poems from a literature point of view. So not only, only, not only AI point of view, but I mean like aesthetical, uh, the metaphors. And very important, you can find what is the stem of a word. So if you have, uh, I don't know, a verb, then it can be past tense, can be future tense, can be conjugate, can be first person, second person, singular, plural. So all this I can uh, derive. And let's see. <laughs> yes, I wanted to know uh, what is the, which poets are the celebs, so the top top 10 of Hungarian poets. We know already, so uh, first I wanted to, there's a 80 terabyte, 80, 80 I don't know, terabyte, gigabyte uh, web corpus where, where I could download this web corpus from the GitHub, but I didn't do that because it was too much. Or you have to do a lot of uh, data cleansing if you have a, a I already gave up after one hour of data cleansing to, to make this uh, web corpus, which is actually full of shit. So, <laughs> shit in, shit out. I, garbage in, garbage out, usually. And what I did, I did OpenStreetMap, downloaded all the names of the Hungarian streets and squares. Fortunately, well, I, I could have uh, included all the Transylvanian things and I just counted how many, how many streets and squares have the most, uh, which poet has the most, uh, how many streets and squares. So this gives me already some kind of ranking according to uh, who, <laughs> who decided to, to, uh, to make, I mean, some poets I think are overrated. <laughs> so, and um, less poets are not so celebrated celebra as as their uh, work should. Uh. So it is Petr Fischandor, he's actually, his father was Serbian and mother Slovakian, and he was named Petrovic, but he changed the, his name. So he's the most famous, he died very soon, and he, is, uh, he has 4,500 streets and squares in Hungary. Uh, and you see the other ones, 
and I included uh, Ji Do Yen, which is a poet uh, born in my, my city. So it's not famous in Hungary, there's only 12 streets named after him. So then I, what I'm doing is to see this is the ranking according to I mean, celebrity or top. And now let's take a look. Are there poems, if we analyze through these grammatical uh, 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 rules, how good are they, are they from other point of view? So, so what could we measure? Well, as we saw, total number of words, total number of poems. So uh, the guy who lived only 26 years, he wrote 800 poems. Uh, more than the guy who lived 55. So this is, uh, we don't have to be always uh, quantity oriented. But uh, poetry, to apply something which is uh, objective to the poetry, I think makes sense. Anyway, so, if, so we, I can analyze the thesaurus, so how rich is their language. Uh, Wortschatz, I think in German, but I don't know the expression in other languages. How rich, how uh, funny, maybe you, you, your, your thesaurus is rich. Uh, then how many verbs you are using, and then I distinguished, well, I don't like poetry which always talks about himself. So I, I, if I only, always use a verb in the uh, first person singular, then I always like to talk about my suffering. I don't really like this. And the ratio, so let's see what comes out. So it comes out the following, that the guy in the ranking was Oran Janusz, the fourth one. The fourth one has a Cesarus of 30,000 uh, distinct word stamps. So, uh, <laughs> Of course, he lived, he lived 65 years. He, uh, he has the, the, the richest uh, thesaurus. And the guy who was the first in the ranking has only 15,000. So it's the half of it. Uh, the other is with the 10,000. Of course, he wrote only 600. So Josef Attila, which I consider is the most, uh, the best uh, Hungarian poet, he has uh, less thesaurus, but well, they lived in different uh, area. Uh, and now the thesaurus ratio to the to the whole words which they're using, then it's Josef Attila 70 percent. So in his uh, that means. Well, he has, uh, according to his Cesarus, he has such a good ratio. Uh, yeah, and the guy with the wor did the worst, uh, with the smallest value in Cesarus, Odi Andre, uh, well, he's also considered, well, as I told you, I don't like poetry, which always talks about suffering, and uh, uh, he, he, he has the le least, uh, uh, Thesaurus. So next. <laughs> and who, who likes to talk always about himself? So it's at the end where he uses uh, 23, 22% of his verbs are in the, the first person singular. So actually the second in the ranking, he always likes uh, to talk about himself. The ones who have Oran Janusz Vörösmorty, they use only 8% of their verbs. They talk about him themselves. Probably they are most clever. So maybe I was thinking if I make uh, analysis over the years, probably the, the older people uh, get a little, little bit not so personal. So but who knows? And interesting, probably in the Hungarian language, the ratio between the verbs compared to total words, it's around 20%. So this means the, the occurrence of verbs in a text is about one-fifth. I don't know if it's uh, in NLP or you can, you can have this in other languages, which is the percentage of verbs 
in a, in a uh, average percentage of words, of verbs in a text. So I think um, this concludes. Ah, so uh, so what uh, conclusion and what are the next steps? So uh, what makes a poet famous? Well, I think. Uh, unfortunately, the politicians and uh, poetry, they are misusing some kind of poets. If you want to, to propagate some kind of idea, and this poet write, wrote, wrote poems like that, then at one time, they start to, to call every street according to this poet, which I, I don't like. So, <laughs> objective classification through celebs and poets. Is he, is he something like celebrity, because he's famous, or it's really this, uh, his poems are really a value. Uh, of course, then I told you that, that with, with NLP you can, uh, you can do more intricate research, not only, uh, for instance, sentimental analysis, I didn't do yet. On the, uh, then, as I told you, the, the literature people, they don't digitize. So, I talked with a guy who is uh, uh, the, the owner of a, of a, a journal, and they don't even have they <laughs> don't even have a, a place where they store their data. They are different, uh, and he doesn't let me to do because I would do I could do this in maybe in two months to make a database which is searchable, but they don't want. So this is the problem. Also, we have with data that they don't want to give data. They don't want to digitize, they don't want to... Uh, of course, international collaboration, so if somebody has this, I already know that Romanians do it, maybe Czech, maybe German. Then multilingual poem, poems. And at the last point, uh, maybe my talk in November in Belgrade will uh, deal not with this topic, but the damage caused by uh, machine translation. So uh, I could talk maybe two weeks about these pitfalls, <laughs> and it's uh, very critical. Uh, now, uh, I want, uh, this is a guy who died six years ago. My grandfather was born in the same village, <laughs> and he says, Avers az amit mondani kell, so the poem is what needs to be said, not written and, and read but said, so it must be living. And now, to conclude, uh, actually my, uh, it's like open source. So uh, open source to be also, uh, all the poems should be available digitally, so why not? Then, uh, starting, I ask you to think a little bit away and to think about this as a puzzle. So, so open source, source code, water source, <laughs> water, I didn't know that this is water. Water source, light source. So does it ring a bell? Because if, if you take out the O and the U, then you have the, the heart in uh, creation and Okay, <laughs> so this is my email address, and now I'm free to questions. Uh, we have six minutes oh, left. Okay. Thank you very much. I was wondering if there is a possibility to tell uh, some software, uh, please write me a poem in the style of uh, some poet uh, on this topic. Of course, um, I'm writing poems. And actually, I told you I'm data scientist, but uh, I was uh, uh, three years in sabbatical when I started to do poetry. And I went back to my, because I decided to move back from Switzerland to Romania. And actually, a guy who is a, a, a cancer, uh, cancer uh, research doctor, he showed me chat GTP. And then I told you, well, I'm writing, I'm writing poems, poems. And then he told me, oh, why don't you try this? Tell 
uh, chat uh, G, uh, GT, uh, GPT, uh, GTP, to um, write your poem as you want. No, it's not the way, because when somebody writes a poem, at least me, that I'm not, I don't know if, uh, I don't know uh, before I write what I want to write. So if I, if I, uh, if I formulate, I want a poem about this, or in this style, or in other style, then I already shot, shoot the, the animal which I want to, to let me run. So you cannot, in the creation, it's not like you define something and you get something, like in uh, project management, even there is not. <laughs> Can you do this to define everything and you get what you want? It's probably not the way creativity works. So you just start and do something and uh, maybe your brain generates, or <laughs> maybe the, the poets, actually not the poets, every human. Every human has in his head some, re some NLP. So why is the NLP functions as our brain? Because we, when we build something, our brain has a model for it. So uh, there is no use to, to us, for me, to use ChatGTP to generate, because he, he also takes from me the, the, uh, the satisfaction that I did it. So it's like uh, I asked somebody to, to uh, I, I like to, to fish, and I asked somebody to fish me thousand, uh, uh, because then it's really, again, something, I, I do this to sell it. So it's like the, the, uh, the monetary uh, shit, <laughs> sorry. So everything we do to make it uh, much more and quantitative. And in this world, actually, what is value is the quality which I experience in Zagreb. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, it's, uh, <laughs> let me say, I'm so happy to be here because actually I lived in close. We are colonies which are closed. And always when we, go to, when we go to make some vacation, we go to Thailand, we go to uh, Italy, and we don't know our neighbors. Yes. So I think your answer is, I won't want to do this. Maybe it's possible. Hi. So thank you very much for the nice presentation. I have one question that bothered me for, for, for a long time about poetry and AI. Maybe you give it a thought. So all these measurements that you have described, they are real, that's what we can do today with, uh, with the technology and everything yes. we have. But there is one question that maybe we are not able to do yet with AI, and I wonder whether you have some idea how to do it in the future. And that's how to automatically assess the depth or the quality of poetry, right? So some, some poems are, let's say, not so powerful, not so strong, not so deep. And then there are others that are really great and awesome and, you know, make up the history and, and move people. And people remember them for, for many years. Is there mm -hmm. some, you know, w well, w are we ever going to be able to have AI going through text and saying, ah, oh, that's a good one, that's going like, to be a good one? It's like an editor, which is a, a computer. So probably, probably because you see all these measures, they already tell, is this poet, uh, uh, he always likes to talk about himself. So I don't like this. Uh, if you have in your life uh, maybe depressive moments, of course, you write good poems about your suffering. But if somebody, a poet, uh, he, he has a love which is not uh, uh, reality, and he writes only these poems for 40 years for an unaccomplished love, then it's, he's do, he cannot evolve to something else. So, it's, so the, I think it's uh, this measure, it's already what you want. I want a, a measure which gives me uh, uh, I mean, a ranking according to some criteria, which is then uh, fertile, uh, which is over. So, uh, um, and it's difficult because I told you if I want to make multilingual uh, poems, in which, I, for instance, uh, I write a poem and I don't find in Hungarian uh, a word which rhymes, then I will use a word from Croatian which rhymes, or, or I mix. Uh, uh, how is that anyway? Can ChatGTP recognize uh, 
if I mix languages, if I mix words which are, have a meaning in one language and in the other language another meaning. So when we start to, to, uh, to mix languages, uh, then it become a bit uh, fuzzy. So, <laughs> so I don't know. This is also already that what you mentioned. And it is, it's not so complex, so it's only a grammatical, grammatical uh, annotation. It's not, uh, it's not rocket science. But to make, uh, it's difficult because the taste, the aesthetics, changes over time. So uh, it cannot be that we have we built something, uh, an oracle, <laughs> like the Greeks, when we ask, is this poem good or not? Maybe we could, but the aesthetic behind it cannot, a machine cannot, uh, uh, because the cannot, machine cannot uh, feel. So you, if you read a text, then you feel something and your blood begins to, to be hot. The a machine cannot do this. <laughs> so it's all connected to our experiences. And when we read a poem, every man has another experience which, uh, and the poem, I think the poem is then good if you write something and everybody has a meaning from himself. So it's not the meaning of the poem. It's, uh, it's one thing which a poem starts for you to a neuro, neuro linguistic programming. So I don't know why it's called like that, but because actually when we talk, we of course uh, have influence on each other's feelings. So why do you have to call it NLP in the psychology? I don't know. It's <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be better at scientific. <laughs> Okay, next. Ah, zero. Okay. The next. Uh, thank you very much. And I want to, to thank actually these uh, this organizers and in the hotel. And what I wanted to say at, at the beginning, uh, today I went to, to make a shower and in the hotel, international, they say, they say uh, start the day with a smile and be different. But this different was written with the, with the letters mixed. So I was thinking, what is this something like? No, be different and it's written. And ChatGPT cannot do that because he generates a text which is not format. You cannot uh, make uh, <laughs> a picture. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.